is Amanda Stronza. I am an anthropologist and a photographer, and I am so honored to be included in the Art of Mending exhibition. And I'm here with um, a few of the animal memorials I've created over the years. For as long as I can remember, I have stopped to uh, stop to my car when I see dead animals on the road. I do it for a couple of reasons. I do it because I can't stand to see cars driving over and past animals that have been killed. It feels so cruel to see them left there. And I do it too because I want to try and restore some dignity to the animal's life. I want to take them away from the asphalt and the noise and the traffic and take them to a quieter, softer place where they can truly rest. And I like to think as well about the animals providing sustenance to other animals even as they are decaying. I like to think about how death uh, can sustain life and how close death is to life. And when I create these memorials, it's a very meditative process, and it allows me to see the beauty of the animal, even in their death. And the process that I do is I look for any beauty where they died. There are always flowers or beautiful leaves or even grasses, even dead leaves around. I collect them and then I uh, adorn the animals as best I can, and I really try to bring out their beauty. And that's part of my way of trying to restore the dignity of the animal. I think so often, for some reason, in our society, we've been, we're, we don't like to talk about death, and I understand that. We are averse to death. I think that we are especially averse to the death of other animals. And we even have a word for dead animals that is roadkill. And to me, the word roadkill connotes that the animal is an object, is something that we can ignore and look away from. And so this process of stopping and, and lifting the animal from the road and creating a space of beauty and a, really a memorial around the animal is for us to see the animal as a life, as a being who had a whole life and a whole story and it's not an object. Um, I also want to draw attention to individual animals. I think part of when we, when we see a dead squirrel on the road or a dead raccoon and we say, oh, that's roadkill, and we're just lumping all raccoons and all squirrels together like they're objects. But, but that squirrel who died on that road was an individual among squirrels and had a whole life. And so that's part of my process. I was inspired by the author Barry Lopez, a naturalist author who's really influential to me, and he wrote a book called Apologia years ago about the very same thing uh, of stopping and retrieving dead animals from the road, and in that way trying to uh, restore some dignity to those animals. I want to say something about why I photograph the animals. I do it not to sensationalize or to exploit their death. Rather, it's my way of, I, I think of it in the opposite. It's a way of trying to honor the life of that animal. And it's my hope that in photographing them in a way that shows their beauty and their dignity and the life that they had, that we can actually dare to see dead animals see them for who they are, who they were. And so I photograph them because in that way I can see them better, but I also hope that we can all see them and in that way all of us can honor them and not just leave them as roadkill on the side of the road. I've been honoring dead animals for many years, but the first one I photographed and shared on social media was about four years ago, and it was a squirrel. He, uh, he was a squirrel I found not on the road. Many of the animals I honor are not animals I find killed by cars. 
sometimes I find them on trails, sometimes they've been predated by other animals, or maybe even died of natural causes, but I create memorials for them as well. In this case, it was a squirrel. He was a squirrel. I try not to use the word it, because I want us to see them not as objects. So this squirrel was in the middle of a trail, and there were pedestrians and people with baby strollers and scooters and bicycles, and everyone was just streaming past this squirrel. And there the squirrel was just completely lifeless, and I was just astounded by how easy it was for us all to stream past the squirrel and not pay any attention. If that squirrel had been a human, there's no way we would have just zoomed on by. And so I think it says something about how we're, it's relatively normal for us to look away from the death of other animals the way we wouldn't look away from the death of humans. So in that moment, I did the thing I always do. I picked up the squirrel and I carried him just to the side of the trail and I surrounded him with some pine cones and it was in the spring so there were some flowers there. And I was surprised that nobody even paid attention to what I was doing, but I created the memorial for the squirrel. And for the first time I thought, I'm gonna photograph this memorial. I think he looked especially beautiful. And I shared his photo on my Instagram account and I was surprised to discover how much people appreciated that photo and how much it moved them. And so I thought, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll keep photographing these animals. Maybe I'll keep sharing memorials. And I've been astounded to discover over the years now how deeply affecting the photos are for people. I get messages from all over the world every day, people sharing the memorials they make themselves. They share them with me. I've learned that many people have been making memorials for many years. I'm certainly not alone. And I've learned that I think people want to talk about death. I think they want to process it somehow. And that seeing these memorials and creating memorials of their own is a way to find some kind of catharsis and healing. And so that's been really... Um, lovely for me to discover and it's been wonderful to connect with so many people around these memorials. I think that there's a whole community of us all over the world who want to do this. I've created memorials for many different species. Owls and coyotes and rabbits and skunks and raccoons and, and even domestic cats and dogs and um, I discovered that the, the animals that draw the most attention, at least on social media, are the snakes. And that has been surprising to me because I know even just among my, I love snakes, but I know even just among my circle of friends that so many people have great fear of snakes, don't even like to look at snakes. But I discovered that the memorials really draw love and attention from people. And I think it's a couple of reasons. In some ways, the, the shape of the snake itself lends itself to the beauty of the almost mandala-like memorial, the spiral that signifies a transition from life to death, and just the symbolism of snakes. It's in some ways the easiest to make them look so beautiful. But I also think that in some ways, seeing a memorial to a snake is healing somehow for people because we know as a species, as humans, that snakes are so maligned and in many ways so misunderstood. I learned from my colleagues in, in science and herpetology that snakes are the, the most affected by roads. The species, the set of species that are most often killed by cars on roads are snakes. Mm -hmm. And that's partly because they are drawn to the, the warmth of the roads where they go to bask in the sun. But also very sadly, because of all the species, snake people will go out of their way to hit a snake and kill a snake. So we find so many snakes on the road, and I think that's partly why people are, have, are just so drawn to, this, to the snake memorials. And that gives me a lot of heart. I especially like bringing love to snakes, because I think more love. I understand
understand why people might at first feel uncomfortable when they look at these memorials. It's not easy to talk about death or to look at death. Uh, and I get the question quite a lot, um, even with a little bit of suspicion, why does this woman find so many dead animals? Um, and I, my response to that is, how do you not find so many dead animals? Death is all around us. I, I challenge you to go out on any given day and not see a dead animal. If you don't see one, I think it's because you might be quite insulated from the natural world. We are surrounded by cycles of life and death, and everywhere you see life, death is right next to it. And so I, I maybe I see more than most, but I'm not living in a place where there are more dead animals than anywhere else. It's just a part of life, and I think starting to see dead animals, I see more and more because my eyes are just open to them. I very purposely don't bury the animals I find, and that's partly because quite often I'm just on the side of the road. I don't carry a shovel with me. I just, my purpose is really to take them off the road and find a soft place to rest and create beauty around them. But it's also very much by design that I leave their bodies there because I'm aware that their bodies become sustenance, become food for the carrion eaters. Quite often I bring the animals back to my house if, if I'm close enough to my house and there I can take more time to create a beautiful memorial. And sometimes I put up uh, cameras in the middle of the night to see who comes for the animal and I've seen foxes and coyotes and vultures and even opossums come for the animals I leave and that always gives me even more heart because I love seeing how death can support life and I love, I love being able to um, provide food for the animals in my yard. So maybe it's a little odd, but in some ways my yard has become a little bit of a, a feeding place for the animals in my neighborhood. When I was invited by Scott and Nancy and Kate to be a part of this um, Art of Mending exhibition, I, to be honest, I had to read the email several times before I could even take it in because I was so surprised and just so deeply honored to be invited. I am a scientist and an anthropologist and I've never self-identified as an artist and I, I don't, I love seeing the memorials as art now and I'm more and more embracing that, but it's just something that I've done and it's just a practice that means something to me and it's only recently that I'm starting to embrace it as an art and I'm just so, I was just so excited to get that email and after reading it several times and making sure I understood it, then I very urgently responded with an emphatic yes, I would love to be included.